Good afternoon, preppers. Welcome to Goshen Prepping. Thanks so much for joining us. There's been a lot of talk about new strains that could lead to a new pandemic, not only in the world, but obviously in the United States as well. Stay to the end because I'm going to show you something that's going to be very interesting about this that you'll definitely want to see. But either way, let's go ahead and jump into a couple articles we're going to look at that may actually discuss what's happening. The first article we will not spend a lot of time with. It simply notes alarming outbreaks currently ongoing in the U.S., and it says that right now through the CDC, there's 11 major ongoing investigations. Many involve foodborne illnesses spreading across multiple states. And that goes along with this article. The CDC issues a public health alert as superbug spreads across the country. Okay, before I jump into this article, I really want you to understand the differences between a bacteria, I'm going to make that nice and big, and a virus, which is really tiny. A bacteria is alive. It reproduces, obviously can make you sick by releasing toxins in your bloodstream and such. Um, whereas a virus is not really alive, it's dead. It actually is simply just really easy to understand. It's like a shell. And inside the shell, it actually has like either proteins or mRNA or DNA or something. And it will actually will take over your cells. There's a big difference between the two. Because for bacteria, which are alive, that's actually why you give antibiotics However, if you actually have a viral infection, we can actually give what are called antivirals. We don't have many of them, but we do have some. All right, let's look at the article now. Because it's very cloudy how they describe this. The CDC said the stomach bug infects millions of Americans each year. And now there's a bacteria in the virus that's not responding to medication. That doesn't make sense at all. There can't be a bacteria in the virus. Okay, but they're actually talking about specifically the norovirus. Or, you know, it used to be called, some people still call this a Norwalk virus. Well, it's also known as the stomach bug. And for the fact that doctors actually use antibiotics to treat it um, shows you that in this particular type of disease, this could be a bad problem because understand that um, since norovirus is a virus, antibiotics can't treat against the virus itself. Now, it can actually change the way your stomach works with certain bacteria. There's a bacteria sometimes in the stomach. We can actually get what's called helicobacter pylori. It actually leads to ulcers and stuff. But when it comes to noroviruses, this is a horrible virus that you actually usually get from like for example, eating salad and the viruses and the, and the water droplets in the salad, and it gives you like some serious, you know, vomiting and bloody mucus diarrhea type thing. Neuroviruses are relatively common in the United States. And uh, in most cases, people recover from them just fine. But recently, on Friday, the CDC released a health advisory to alert the public that the virus is out there. And specifically, the older population or immunocompromised may actually have some serious problems with it. Most of us won't, though. But for those people with those problems, especially like even dehydration, it could lead to death. But here's where they're saying doctors are using antibiotics to working for the bacterial causes for GI symptoms. However, there are also viral stomach bugs like norovirus that we have to deal with. Okay, they do not respond to antibiotics. So some other ones we have to look at as well. Um, another superbug spreading across the country is Candida auris. Oris in Latin means the ear, and that's actually what was discovered. It was actually discovered as a fungus in the ear. And even though it's a fungus-like, it's more like yeast. The difference is a true fungus actually survives and lives as a colony, kind of like our body's made up of cells that work together. A fungus does the same thing, cells that work together, fungus cells. But a yeast are actual individual fungus cells that actually function completely without being in a colony. And that's exactly what this bug is. Of course, I don't mean a bug like an animal bug, but a super bug. And if it gets inside the body, the yeast type fungus affects the bloodstream, the nervous system, and internal organs. It has a mortality rate ranging from 30 to 53% of patients. This is definitely bad news. And you can see the reported cases in the last 10 years, I mean, up to 2019 anyway. In the United States, we have quite a bit, but places like South Africa, definitely much higher precedent, but it's starting to spread across the country. But the big one on people's mind right now, by the way, is the Marburg. The next pandemic, Marburg. This article came out last year, but we're definitely seeing this in the news as of recently. Some things you need to know. First off, it is in Africa. It is not in the United States specifically, even though there actually have been outbreaks in Europe and the United States. By far, the majority of it is in Africa. But it's spreading very rapidly in Africa, by the way. We do worry about this because it is human-to-human -human contact through body fluids, and it works a lot like Ebola. And the worst part is the virus's incubation period can be up to three weeks. And given its high death rate, upwards of 88 to 90 percent, it is disastrous. So the incubation period, you have to understand that is actually the most scariest part, because if you actually see it in the movies, they'll see a virus that you catch it. And then 24 hours later, you come down with the actual sickness. That's actually good, because if you take all those people and isolate them for a week, they're not going to spread it anymore. But when you see like Marburg, you could literally 
for two and a half weeks be going around during this incubation period, you don't even know you have it. And since it's on body fluids, you could conceivably transfer it to other people. Now, there are a lot of viruses in the incubation period you can't transfer very easily until you actually have an outbreak of symptoms, not necessarily with Marburg. So if this thing does get out and continue, it could spread around the population very quickly, you know, human to human, you know, fluid contact. And within three weeks, finally, you'll actually start showing symptoms of it. And it has such a high fatality rate. This is what nightmares are made of when it comes to pandemics. Fever, headache, muscle pains, watery diarrhea, stomach pain, nausea and vomiting, exhaustion, lethargy, you know, you just kind of like lay around, can't do anything. Blood in the vomit and feces, nose, gums and vagina. And that's why it's a hemorrhagic or a bleeding disorder. Most people die eight to nine days after the infection from extreme loss of blood. And one last thing I want to point out, there is no specific therapeutics for Marburg. So you need to simply just do rehydration, especially if you can do it through IV fluids. So as Marburg continues to be in the headlines, I will definitely keep you updated on what I know and how it basically can help you. But again, being viruses, there's, uh, again, not a lot of antivirals on the market like Tamiflu, for example. I doubt very much Tamiflu will even actually affect this virus. But just like Ebola, we had a scare a few years ago. There's actually a really good reason to have a scare for these particular type of viruses because they are extremely devastating. Now, I will tell you right now, although I used to be big into pharmaceuticals, used to in a previous life, I despise the things now. But when it comes to antibiotics, however, antibiotics literally increase the life expectancy of mankind because... Uh, it's such a simple thing to be able to kill off bacterial infections, whereas nowadays most people will not die from bacterial infections because of antibiotics. But as time goes on, especially as we get a lot of our antibiotics from China, which is now limited now, especially if we actually see some serious shortages or even if we go to war with China, etc., it's something we have to worry about. So I'm going to talk about this book really very quickly. It's Alton's Antibiotics and Infection Disease from Dr. Alton. You know, we call him Dr. Bones. I'll put a link, by the way, down below for this if you want to pick one up. But there are so many alternatives to antibiotics that you could actually take, or even more so, things like fish antibiotics, which, by the way, they're on their way out. The government's trying to control these as well. Of course they are. But there's certain things you want to be able to do, because especially when crap hits the fan, and that's what Dr. Alton's all about, is giving you medical advice that you can use if crap hits the fan. Don't do it now because you'll be practicing medicine without a license, but there are no doctors and ambulances and hospitals and all those things. You may not have a choice. So if I were you, I'd pick this up. Just simply add it to your arsenal. You can start reading through it now, but when crap hits the fan, you can actually start going through it and actually looking at specifically how to affect or how to treat specific ailments and where actually to get some alternatives for those antibiotics. So I definitely highly recommend this book. All right, so again, I will keep you updated as I start seeing more things as well. Uh, when it comes to devastating viruses or even certain strains of bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics, I'll try to give you as much info as I can when these things really do pop up. And right now, this is one thing that is popping up, especially with Marburg. We are not into the woods yet. You know, of course, we have to get out of the woods with a virus. But right now, we don't have to worry about it as much in America, but it is spreading and it is something at least we need to keep an eye on. So I will definitely keep you posted. Thanks for, thanks for following along.